So, it's lovely to meet you all. My name's Shania James, just like Shania Twain. So, a little bit about Memory Matters. So, has anybody ever heard of Memory Matters before? Yeah? Do you know where we are? No? We are not. We're in New George Street. <laughs> and we're in Moments Cafe on New George Street. So Memory Matters is above. So we're all the same organization, um, but Moments is like a project of ours that we run um, that's open for the general public. So a little bit of background about Memory Matters. So we started in 2010. And these were our two lovely joint CEOs who started Memory Matters. We originally started in Cornwall, where we started providing groups for people living with dementia. And those groups are called Cognitive Stimulation Therapy. Now, this is an evidence-based, proven talking therapy to help slow down the progression of a mild to moderate dementia. And we do that by activities. So we started in Cornwall in different different groups around in Bodmin, Weybridge, Lisgard, Newquay, just providing this therapy um, for people living with dementia. However, Kate, the lady on the left, she lives in Plymouth and she wanted to start doing more up here, so they decided to buy a cafe, which is, they've, they're ex-registered nurses, so they had no idea what they were getting themselves into, uh, but they bought Moments on New George Street where in moments, we have different eras, so we have the 50s, the 60s, the 70s, and the 80s that you can sit in, and, you, and there's different objects from that era, and you can reminisce whilst you're sat there having a cup of coffee and a slice of cake. And then above moments, we have the Memory Matters Hub, where, where I work, and now we provide cognitive stimulation therapy in Plymouth. And all them groups are funded by the National Lottery, so they're all free. Um, and we also provide a dementia advice and support hub service where people can come in and have free advice with one of our dementia advisors Monday to Friday about anything. So that might be a family member, a loved one, the person with dementia needs a bit of support, they've just been diagnosed and they don't really know where to go, where well, one of our advisors can help support that. So that's just a little bit about Memory Matters in a nutshell. But specifically, I'm going to talk to you today about the different types of dementia, some of the symptoms people might display, and then um, dementia-friendly spaces, and how to make some of your churches dementia-friendly, some ideas that you might not have thought about. So today, we're going to talk about four different types of dementia. So there are hundreds and hundreds of different types of dementia. So dementia is the umbrella term. But there are four most common types of dementia. So today we're going to talk about Alzheimer's disease, vascular dementia, dementia with Lewy bodies, and frontal temporal dementia. These are the most common. So dementia is a group of symptoms that cause a permanent decline of a person's ability to process thought and the cognitive ability. So some of the symptoms might be memory loss and difficulties with thinking or problem solving or language. So dementia is caused by a biological processes within the brain that damage brain cells. It's caused when the brain is damaged by disease, most commonly Alzheimer's disease or a series of strokes. Unfortunately, there is no cure for dementia. There are around 540,000 carers of people with dementia in England. It's estimated that one in three people will care for a person with dementia in their lifetime. Half of them are employed, and it's thought that 66,000 people have already cut their working hours to care for a family member, whilst 50,000 people have left work altogether. So there are currently around 900,000 people with dementia in the UK. This is projected to rise to 1.6 million by 2040. So over 500,000 people in the UK have undiagnosed dementia. And there's no distinct cause but stress, diet and depression are major players to having a dementia. Alzheimer's disease is the most common type of dementia. It's so a progressive condition which means the symptoms develop gradually over many years and eventually becomes more severe. It affects multiple brain functions. The exact cause of Alzheimer's disease is not yet fully understood, although a number of things are thought to increase your risk of developing the condition. So as the sy symptoms of Alzheimer's disease progress slowly, it can be difficult to recognize that there is a problem. 
Many people feel that memory problems are a simple part of getting older. The disease process itself may prevent people recognizing changes in their memory, but Alzheimer's disease is not a normal part of aging process. So vascular dementia happens when the blood supply to parts of our brains becomes reduced. This can be due to blood vessels being clogged, a stroke or series of small strokes. Over time, areas of the brain cells stop, stop working, leading to symptoms of dementia. When you have a stroke, the blood supply to part of your brain is cut off, killing brain cells. The damage from a stroke can cause problems with memory and thinking. So vascular dementia can also be caused by small vessel disease. This is when the small vessels, small vessels deep within your brain become narrow and clogged up. The damage stops blood from getting to parts of your brain. The damage can build up over time and may cause signs of vascular and cognitive impairment. Uh, so vascular dementia is a common type of dementia caused by reduced blood flow to the brain. It's estimated to affect around 150,000 people in the UK. So this is the second most common type. It tends to get worse over time, though it's sometimes possible to slow it down. So how we like to describe vascular dementia, um, the process, is when someone's diagnosed with vascular dementia, they might go on, okay, and it's all fine for a little while, and you may not notice any decline, but then all of a sudden they might have a severe drop. So it's a bit like a staircase. So you go along, okay, for, for a moment, and then you might have a se severe decline, and then it doesn't really get any better, it just goes along steady and then it drops down again and then it carries on. So it usually gets worse over time. This can happen in sudden steps with periods in between the, where the symptoms don't change. So that's what we like to describe as the staircase for some people. And it's usually caused if someone has a stroke or small blood vessel disease. So the most common question is we get asked is, what's the difference between Alzheimer's disease and vascular dementia? So the main difference is it appears to be in the way which symptoms begin and progress. So unlike Alzheimer's disease, memory loss isn't the typical first symptom. Instead, people with vascular dementia can have different signs depending on the area of the brain that's affected, such as problems with planning or judgment. So Alzheimer's disease is more the memory, and the vascular disease is more planning and judgment. So Another stroke, so if someone's had multiple strokes, um, it can cause a sudden deterioration in some abilities in vascular dementia. And people with Alzheimer's disease tend to experience a more consistent rate of decline. So Alzheimer's disease goes straight down like this. Vascular is a staircase, so that's the difference in those. But people can have mixed dementia as well, so they might have both. They might have Alzheimer's disease and vascular dementia, which they might experience all um, difficulties and they might experience a slow, more slow decline if they have both. So dementia with Lewy bodies is caused by clumps of protein forming inside brain cells. These abnormal deposits are called Lewy bodies. Dementia with Lewy bodies may have hallucinations. So this is the seeing, hearing, or smelling things that not, are not always there. Sometimes with this dementia with Lewy bodies as well, they might hear children or babies or animals. They might hear children crying, especially babies crying, they want to get to that child or they want to see that animal and that's quite common with dementia with Lewy body. So yeah, their reality is that thing is moving and that's why they get so frightened. So this might be what it was. So if you're having hallucinations, it can obviously cause daily activity increasingly difficult and someone with a condition may eventually be unable to look after themselves. <clears throat> so these uh, deposits, dementia with Lewy bodies, are also found in people with Parkinson's. Um, they build up in areas of the brain responsible for functions such as thinking, visual perception, and muscle movement. So, with Parkinson's as well. Um, it's not clear why the deposits develop and how exactly they damage the brain. It's thought that the part of the problem is the proteins affecting the brain's normal functions by interfering with signals sent between brain cells. So, that's where it clogs up and gets damaged over a period of time. Okay, so the frontal temporal dementia is where the front part, this part of your brain, is damaged. So it's an uncommon type of dementia, but that causes problems with behavior and language. So how we like to describe this type is when the filter part of your brain 
is damaged. So this can become increasingly difficult when you're taking your loved one that has frontal dementia out into the public because they might say things that are not considered appropriate because that part of their brain is damaged and they don't have that filter anymore. They just say exactly what comes to mind. So they'll be honest with you. So it affects the front and the sides. So dementia mostly affects people over 65, but this type of dementia tends to start at a younger age. So most cases are diagnosed in people aged 45 to 65, although it can affect younger or older people. So this type of dementia also develops slowly and gets gradually worse over several years, so it's quite a slow decline. So I run a group in moments um, for, called the Young Onset Group. That's for people living with younger um, dementia. So most of them have frontal temporal dementia. And they've been diagnosed before the age of 65. So we meet once a month on a Saturday. Um, and my youngest is 45 in that group. And he's got frontal temporal dementia. So the front part of his brain um, is damaged. Um, so, so frontal dementia gets worse from varies from person to person and is very difficult to predict. Um, people with a conditional condition can become socially isolated as the illness progresses. They may not want to spend time with, in company of others because they might be rude or insulting um, because the filter is damaged. But it's just important just to explain that. A lot of people that we see, um, if their loved ones or carers are bit embarrassed about taking them out is we provide little cards that people can have at our lanyard saying I do have dementia um, just to make other people aware that they, ha they have a difficulty so everyone knows. Um, so it's not fully understood why uh, frontal dementia happens but there's often a genetic link so around one in eight people who get frontal temporal dementia will have relatives who are also affected by this condition. So dementia and Alzheimer's isn't usually genetic, um, however, in this case, it could be. Of course you can. Yeah. It's really difficult. So if they're with someone, their care or loved one might say, you can definitely tell them that's not appropriate, you can't say that, and they might say, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't realise that, but they might not recognise that that is an issue, but it's important to correct and say you can't say that and um, you can't say that it's not fair it's not right it's rude um, and they might turn around and say I'm really sorry it depends on the person um, but yeah they they, they, no they're not recognizing that that's an issue until you approach that and say that because definitely approach it and say you cannot say that um, because it's they might not remember that they've said something rude and they might say it again and they might say it again so it's just you cannot say that, it's rude. Um, and then they might say, sorry, or oh, I'm really sorry, I didn't mean to upset you. Yeah. 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 And it's just making other people aware around them that they do have a dementia. Um, and they might say something inappropriate. They might not. Um, and it depends on the group and stuff that you've got as well. So it's just being aware. And having a lanyard is really, really helpful for people, other people to be aware and notice. Again, it depends on the person. Um, it is really difficult. Sometimes they might forget to put the lanyard on or they might refuse to wear it because they might not want everyone to know. Um, or sometimes they're quite willing because they like other people to know. The amount of people I see that have got dementia and they always enter the room, they say, oh, I've got Alzheimer's, by the way, it's because they like for people to know um, that if they repeat themselves or if they ask multiple questions that everyone's on the same for. Yeah, and sometimes the care or loved one will just say, come on, you need to put that today. And they might not even take any notice that they've got it on, but it's just for other people to be aware. Yes, so this one and dementia with Lewy bodies as well. All the different types of dementia, you could become aggressive. Um, I think most of that is down to frustration, though, if they're not getting their point of view across. And in a moment, we're going to talk about communication. And we can minimise the frustration and the aggression just by communicating us to communicate better with people with dementia um, because their aggression and their violence might come from frustration because in their head, their reality is so exactly the same as our reality. So there's no point arguing 
or telling them they're wrong because their reality is so like your mum with the hallucinations. That is exactly what she saw. No matter when you're saying there's nothing there, there's nothing there. That's what she can see. So her reality is so severe. So there's no point arguing with her because you're not going to win. You might as well just try and calm her down and just reassure her that she's safe and she's okay and everything's going to be all right. So a lot, most of them can cause aggression. So these are a few symptoms that I've come up with. So memory loss, obviously, is the most common one. So we've got three different types of memory. So we've got the short-term, the long-term, and the emotional memory. So the short-term memory is the things that we remember happened this morning, happened yesterday. So what did you have for breakfast, those sorts of things. It's a question. So they're the three different types of memory. So we've also got agnosia. So this is when someone may not be able to recognise you. So David, you were saying earlier when you seen your mum, she wasn't able to recognise who you were. Um, that must have made you feel upset and sad. Yeah, definitely. So this is also about um, objects as well. So not also when you see someone they might not be able to recognize you when an object on the table so you might say to a person with dementia oh can you pass me that pen and they might think what's, what's a pen or they can't interpret the different objects on the table so in a moment we'll talk about ways around that and how to make it a bit more dementia friendly for someone so and when so an, an example I've got here is about a cup. So if, if they might not know the different, what a cup is or a plate is. So when you're giving them the cup, you put, maybe put it up to your mouth so they can see that that's how you drink the tea um, from the cup. So moving the objects that are suitable, a knife and fork, maybe having different colors as well. So it stands out to people, the different objects. So can you pass me that blue fork? So then they can see, oh, that's blue. That must be the fork sort of thing or having labels on things is also really useful, um, so it can stand out to people a bit more. Patterns on the table, um, so you might have, I don't know, a wonderful tablecloth with cups and saucers and lots of different things on, and you're trying, and the person with dementia is trying to do an activity like a puzzle on the table, they will get completely overwhelmed because they will think that that tablecloth with the cups and saucers on are real, so they will try to pick that up. So just have a plain tablecloth or no tablecloth whatsoever, um, just so they can concentrate on one activity at a time because they, that in their reality, they think the tablecloth's real. You might have heard of, um, if a person with dementia goes in somewhere and there's a black rug, uh, you might see them walk around it because they, in their reality, they think that's a black hole. Um, so they're not aware that that's a rug. So just take the rug away um, because they will walk around. So we always try to minimize that distractibility. So aphasia. So this is when someone may not understand or be understood. So it's the inability to interpret or express language and the ability to understand it. So in the early stages of dementia, this can be word difficulties, this can be sound, but as the dementia progresses, this can then turn into aphasia. Um, and this can also affect people's self-esteem. So I've got a couple of chaps in my group that's got aphasia, but it's just about giving them their time and really breaking down, talk clearly, talk loud so they can hear you and just giving them their time to answer the question um, or just to have that communication because it will take them a bit longer, but just slow down and tell and reassure them it's okay. Bless him, he gets really frustrated, um, but just reassure them that it's all right and we've got time, it's no rush, and eventually he will find the words to say, but it just takes them quite a long time. Um, and also they might know what they want to say, but they can't find the word to say it, but ask them to describe it. So I heard you earlier, Kathy. you said your mum used to say, yeah, well, so what other word to describe it? So if they're trying to think about an object, well, what, what does that object do? And then they try and describe it, and then you can help them then um, to find that word. Sometimes they want to find it on their own, and that's absolutely fine. They're like, oh, don't tell me. I'm like, okay. Yeah, that's the thing, because then you can try and help them as well and assist them if they want it. 
So wayfinding, so this is when people with dementia struggle to find their way, um, so if they're not in a familiar environment, so if you go on holiday um, and they're not used to the environment that they're in, they might struggle to find their way back or way around the hotel. So the way around this is, it, it's horrible to say because it is, it's their human right to have their privacy, but we, we do recommend a tracker. So if you're going away with family and you've got a loved one living with dementia, um, just to have like a little, you can get these trackers now that you can put in their bag or in their pocket or on their keys or on a lanyard. Um, so you can keep track if you're going to a, a holiday um, and they're not familiar with that. So yeah, if they live alone as well, it's really good. Um, and also if they move house, uh, so if you move um, a person with dementia into a new house, a bungalow or anything, or into your house if it's your loved one, um, they might be a bit, they struggle to find the toilet, so it's about having signs up um, and places that they can go quite easily, because um, that might all get a bit confusing. So we try to say if someone's diagnosed with dementia, keep don't move around the living room, don't move around the kitchen, keep everything in the same place because it would just overwhelm them and find it difficult. Wow. So the last one here is disorientated. So this can affect someone's time and place. So we see a lot of people where they say, oh, mum or dad, or they don't know what day of the week, they keep asking me what day it is, they keep asking me what time it is, or they're getting up early hours in the morning and they're getting dressed and they're going out because they think it's daytime when it's nighttime. Um, so the way around this is we recommend something called a memory clock where you can plug it in and mum and dad can see the day of, day of the week and it also has a.m. or p.m. really clearly with the time um, and then they can just look at that then. It also keeps their independence as well so they can see what day of the week it is um, rather than always having to ask a loved one. And then at night time, making sure it's really dark, so having the blackout curtains where no light can come in and they recognise that it's night time because it's dark rather than having daylight coming in and stuff. So just keeping that consistent. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, yeah, that's a really good point. Just have a big whiteboard of the days of the week and then if she's got any appointments, because that's another thing people with dementia, they get quite anxious that they forgot an appointment or they can't remember. So it's just having everything that they've got to do on each day written on a whiteboard so that they can see, oh, today I'm fine, I haven't got anything, or tomorrow I've got this. So yeah, that's a really good point. So how to communicate with someone living with dementia. So this is so, so important um, because we need to make sure that we are able to communicate with someone living with dementia to minimize the frustration and minimize the aggression because when you're talking to someone living with dementia and you're not understanding what they're saying and you portray that, um, that's when the aggression and the frustration comes because in their reality, it's so severe what they're thinking. Um, just to communicate slowly and clearly, so really think about what you want to portray, the message that you want to say. So slow it down and clearly say exactly what you're trying to say. And so use short and simple sentences. So instead of talking all the way around the houses just to get to one point thing, just say exactly what you need to say. So instead of talking about the weather and then talking about how they are and blah, 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 and then you want to ask them if they want a cup of tea, they'll be like, oh my goodness, what, what's she trying to say to me? So then just ask them if they want a cup of tea. So don't talk to the person in a childlike voice. So this is so important um, with people with dementia because they're not children, they're adults um, that just have a bit of a an illness that just need a little bit more clearly. So don't talk to them like you would talk to a baby or a child. Talk to them as you would talk to an, another adult. Just slow things down a bit. And be patient. That's really important because especially if they've got aphasia, um, they might struggle to find their words, but just give them time. They will get there in the end or they might need a bit of assistance, but just ask them to describe what they're trying to say. So within cognitive stimulation therapy that I provide the group, um, we never, ever, ever ask factual questions. It's always opinion-based, and this is the best way to communicate with someone. So whether you're providing a group or not, just to be able to talk to them, you use I wonder questions. So I wonder 
what the weather's like, or I wonder. So it's not actually asking, what did you have for tea last night? You could say, I wonder what you fancy for tea. So then they can choose what they want, rather than saying, what do you want for tea? Because they might be like, oh, I don't know, I don't know, I can't, I can't think. Um, so use opinion base. Have, you could have pictures as well. So for example, if you're asking them what they want to wear today, and you show them their wardrobe, they might get overloaded with, oh, I've got too much in my wardrobe, I don't know what's the weather like, I don't know what to wear. Pick two things. What would you like to wear, this one or this one? So it just minimizes all that overwhelming of everything going on, so then they can choose what they want as well. So short, regular conversations might be useful if the person becomes tired easily. So this is more advanced, so as they progress down their journey, there they might get quite tired. And when you have a dementia and you're talking for an hour, it's very, very tiring because the, they have to use their brain so, so much. Um, so it, they do get quiet, tired. So try to use short conversations. Um, and then once you can see that they get tired, leave it as that. And avoid speaking sharply and raising voices. So just softly, just like you would talk to each other um, and just normally, really. Lighting, the furniture and furnishings, the flooring, and knowing where things are. So lighting, so these are some practical tips. So good lighting helps you see clearly and make sense of where you are. You may find that you need a lot more light as you get older to see properly. Dementia can make it harder to keep track of time and to understand where you are in your home. This is important to allow natural light to come in through clean windows and for your home to be well lit. So the most important thing is that having natural light coming through the windows. So if it's daytime, move pull the curtain, pull the blinds up, um, move the furniture, TV or plants out of the window so they can see that it's daytime because there's natural lights coming in. So use brighter bulbs um, so they can really see or maybe have some lamps or stuff if they need extra lighting. And then at bedtime, like I mentioned earlier, make sure the room is very dark so that they can sleep better and they understand that it's nighttime because it's dark outside. Close the curtains, close the blinds. Even having a night light is useful as well if they get up in the night um, to go to the toilet or something. Uh, so furniture and furnishes. So dementia can make people feel disorientated or confused about what they are seeing. Colour and pattern can make a big difference to how easily you can find your way around your home. Use bright and contrasting colours for furniture and furnishings can help you see things more clearly. Contrast the colours of furniture, including beds, tables, chairs, lamps with walls and the floors so they stand out to you. Stripes or strong patterns can be confusing as disorientating, so simplify where they are. So get rid of the stripes, get rid of the patterns because they think that's real, their reality. So just have plain, bright colours. So in Memory Matters and Moments, we have a white wall with bright green doors um, so people can easily green's our colour, but people can easily see where the door is. And then on the toilets as well, about having the sign. Also, our toilets are blue. So instead of having a white toilet seat, we have a blue toilet seat. So when people are going into the toilet, they can notice that, that that's the toilet because it's bright blue in front of them. Um, and then it saves them wondering where the toilets are as well. Um, so just changing the colours of things. So like here, having different coloured chairs so they can stand out. Um, also, when you're having a cup of tea or something, just like you've done now, have different color mugs to the table so they can easily see that the mug is different to the table so it doesn't contrast with all the different colors. So just having different colors for different things is really useful. With the chairs, it's brilliant because it's bright red. You can see that there's a different color chair um, around. So also mirrors, so check pictures and mirrors. So we don't have any mirrors in the cafe or in the hub because it is common for people, when people who live with dementia see the, their reflection in the mirror, they don't understand that that's them. Um, so they might get confused or they might think, oh my gosh, who's that looking at me? So we just take the mirror away because it causes too much distress. So don't have any mirrors is really important. So in toilets and things, um, the ladies don't like it because we don't have a mirror in the toilet, but it just caught lessens the distress for them. Um, and yeah, try not to move things around, so keep a familiar environment can help you find your way. So keep things the same. 
So yeah, avoid backless and low chairs so it's comfortable and easier for people to sit in and use furniture and plain coloured furnishings that contrast with the wall. So yeah, if you're having a white or cream wall, make sure the chair or table stands out beside it and the doors as well. So flooring, so the flooring, you should be able to move safely and easily around your home without risk of trips and falls. It's very easy to trip over uneven floors or mats, so changes in the color of the floor from room to room, rugs and dark floor mats can be confusing. Dementia can change how you see things, so shiny floors can look wet or slippery. So if you have a carpet which has speckles in, um, so it might be a cream carpet with some dark brown speckles or something, um, that might look like litter to someone living with dementia, so they might try and pick up the speckles on the carpet. Uh, so just having a plain uh, carpet is useful. Uh, take away any dark coloured rugs or flooring that look, can look like holes. Um, so it's just useful just to have a plain matte flooring. Um, so particularly on the stairs. So if you're having some stairs, it should contrast with the wall. So you should easily be able to see the stairs compared to the wall. Um, so wires and cables, make sure they're all hidden away and they won't be a hazard. And any carpet edging or cover strips holding the, the carpet down in exactly the same color as the flooring because they might walk over it because they're not sure what it is. Um, so just make sure it's all the same. So knowing where things are in your home. So this is just practical things. So always keep important items such as your keys, glasses, wallet or purse or your phone in the same place where people are most likely to see them because they might think, this is good for us all. Where's the keys? Where's the wallet? Where's that? So just keep it in the same place, maybe by the front door or wherever you sit so it's useful for you. You could have a clear plastic blocks, box or a large bowl to put them in. So label cupboards, so if, especially if you're in the kitchen and the, all the cupboards are closed, all the cupboard doors are closed, you can either take off the doors to make it so much easier for people living with dementia to see what's inside or put labels on them. So in this cupboard you'll find the tea, coffee, sugar, um, just to make it easier for people. And also leave the bathroom and kitchen doors open when at home, so make sure all the, all the doors are open so they can easily find their way because if they close the doors they might not know what's inside. So also um, think about removing cupboard doors. So if you've got internal fridge and freezer, remove those cupboard doors, washing machine, that sort of thing, um, so they can find where things are day to day. So some things that you guys can start to think about. Um, so just some ideas that I've sort of put together. So Dementia Friendly Church's ideas. So make sure the font, so this is the signage, so make sure the font is simple and clear and easy to read. So use symbols or pictures, so the toilet, um, but also make sure the signs are actually on the door of the toilet, so don't have it but on the wall and an arrow point in that way because that just causes too much confusion. Have it on the toilet door um, so they can see it easy and clear. So the entrance, so make sure all the entrance is well lit and you have as much natural light coming through as possible. So all the floors need to be a matte finish and non-slippery. Um, so also if you've got carpets and stuff like that, make sure it's all plain, no speckles or anything like that. Um, so the changes in level need to be marked clearly. So if you've got changes in stairs, maybe have a different color carpet so they can easily quite see um, the different, where the different level goes to. Also having a quiet space um, for people living with dementia. So if they're in a church service or a group and they get quite overwhelmed, another way around this is um, we brought them to the Dementia Friendly uh, Carol service last year, having a twiddle muff. I don't know if anyone's ever heard of them before, so we get lots of them donated to us. It's just a knitted, should have bought one really, it's just a knitted um, pouch where they've got buttons and they've got a little bit of string inside the pouch so it looks a bit like a hand warmer that people can put their hands in and it's just a distraction so they can play with the buttons inside they can play with the zip they can play with the cotton um, and it just causes that level of if they're quite overwhelmed with the sen sensory overload going on it just causes them to calm down a little bit and just have that distraction by playing with a twi twiddle muff so some features, so having familiar features on the wall, so, so they recognise that they're in a church or a cross, so because 
they might, people with dementia might not know, well, they know where they are, but they might forget where, they've, where they are a little while after. So having, so they can look around and think, oh yeah, I'm at church because there's a cross or something that they recognize that they're here for. Um, and seating, so make sure there's suitable seating for people with mobility challenges, including having comfortable chairs, and make sure everybody can access the main church accessibly. Yeah, so, yeah, definitely. So like I was saying earlier that I, I run a group for younger people. Um, so they're people that's been diagnosed before the age of 65. Um, it's quite a large group, and that's for Plymouth um, only, and it is quite a large group. I've got around 12 people in that group, and they come along with their carers or loved ones, um, and it's on a Saturday, second Saturday of every month for a couple of hours because some of them are working. Um, and the most common type is to have frontal temporal dementia, but I also have people in there that have Alzheimer's that's just been diagnosed earlier, um, and they come along, and their music tastes different as well and the reason we set up this group is because we were seeing a lot of people where they would come to us and they would say oh we would offer them these groups they say yeah but they're all older and they're all like 80 and I don't talk want to talk about what they want to talk about because I wasn't born then and things like that so we were like right what can we do to help get them some support and do a group for them so we set up a young onset group because it's so important that they get their own space to come and share ideas but the things we talk about is completely different to the other things that we would talk about in an older person's group because they have different interests and different hobbies and it's really important to take that into consideration so with the music taste it's completely different to what um, another group of 80 year old people might enjoy so yeah and it's just working out so again that all about me form is really important to find out what they like and what their past occupation is as well it's really nice to s sometimes find that out so you can really I've got a gentleman who bless him since he's been, he was a ship pilot and he um since he's been diagnosed with dementia, he's got really emotional. He, his wife says he's never, ever liked that before. And when you talk about his job, he gets really, not sad, but he gets so happy and he cries quite a lot. But he likes that. He likes to talk about his past memories of his job and he really enjoyed it. And But the emotion side of things is completely new for him because he was quite a man's man and he didn't cry and he didn't want to show emotion. But since he's been diagnosed, he... Um, he cries quite a lot, but his wife really likes that and gets really emotional about his job. So it's just, but I wouldn't have never known about his job unless I filled out a, a, the All About Me form. Um, so it's just really nice just to get to know who they are as a person because they still are a person. They still are human. They still have memories. They've still had experiences. Um, but it's just talking about things that they enjoy. No, that's okay. It's really difficult because when they're, uh, when it's young, when they're younger, um, they might experience some memory difficulties, but it takes a little while longer for them to get their diagnosis because they go through everything else first. Um, so I've got a lady as well. She is 62, and it's she's still not diagnosed, but there's, she's been referred, and they're doing brain scans, and they're trying to rule everything else out first. They were saying about the menopause and all that. So they're just trying to rule everything else out first before they get to that diagnosis because they are young. Um, and that's why it's called an early onset because they're before the age of 65. Before I finish, this is what I just want to leave you on. So a person with dementia may not be able to, so these are really important, learn from experience, so work things out for themselves, they might need a bit of support. Practice to make perfect, so they struggle with that, they can't keep practicing the same sort of thing to make it perfect. Uh, follow instructions, verbal or written, familiarize themselves with, and tell you what's wrong or explain what's the matter. So you might find someone with dementia upset or crying, and they can't tell you what's wrong because they might not know, or they might you might not be able to work it out. So it's just reassuring them that they're okay and they're safe. And every time is the first time. So when you're, oh, she's already asked me that. It's their first time for them, so just remember. Thank you. Has anybody got any questions?